So recently I've been playing around with um, putting UI elements inside the world, you know, like uh, having anchors on some sprites or a, a label that follows your ship or something. And uh, I found a couple of different issues and, and, and quirks that I wanted to talk about in this video. So the premise is pretty simple. Say you have some sprite or a door or something in your world and you want to attach a button or some kind of interactable UI element on this object in the world. So it's not going to be part of the HUD, but it's going to follow whatever you're looking at. Now in Godot, it should be really, really easy because Godot doesn't care if you're using a control UI node or a node 2D or a sprite or something like that. You can just parent all of this together and then the objects are going to follow each other. So that's really amazing and it works pretty well. Now the problem is that it's also going to take the rotation and the zoom, which means that if you zoom the camera or if you rotate the sprite, then your label is going to start looking a little bit funky. So I was wondering, is there a way that I can make this label follow the sprite, but not necessarily take, for example, the zoom of the camera into account? So one way I thought of doing it is take the label out from the hierarchy of the sprite and then just use a script every frame to update the position of the label so that it doesn't take the uh, position. Of course, it's still going to take the zoom of the camera. To do this, you need to add a canvas layer. And then in this canvas layer, you put la your label. I do this for basically all my UI elements so that they're always fixed in the screen and don't move with the camera of the world. And in this case, I want the object to move with the camera of the world. So I need to take the position of the sprite and then transform this position into screen coordinate that I can use to set the position of my label. My only problem with this is that if you have hundreds of interactable UI elements, then it means that all these interactable UI elements have to have a process run every frame to update their position. And I feel this could be a little bit costly because even if this UI element is not in visible range, you still need to update its position every frame in case it becomes in visible range. One special situation where I would use this though is if I wanted the label, for example, to stick to the side of the screen. So let's say this is an arrow pointing to an objective. And when the objective is inside the player's view, it's pointing this object. But when the object is outside of the player view, you still want to point in the right direction. This can be really easily done by simply clamping the values to the size of the screen. And then you're going to automatically have your label follow the object on the side of the screen. And I think that would be the perfect use case for this. But if you want to have say a button next to an interactable door, then updating this button every frame, even when the door is not in sight, I feel that's a little bit expensive. Now, because I was a little bit worried of the performance of the previous method, I went full on crazy performance for the next idea I had. And I figured that maybe there's a way to extract the scale information from the world view matrix inside the shader and then just remove this information so that the sprite is never scaled, no matter the zoom level. And indeed, it's possible. I found someone on the internet who told me how to extract the scaling information from a world view matrix and I just applied it inside a Godot shader and fair enough, my object never changes scale when everything else is zoomed in and out, yet it keeps its position and rotation perfectly fine. That's probably the most efficient you can get because like you're just calculating a matrix inside a vertex shader, which is done anyway inside every vertex shader for every object in the world. So I think this is by far the most efficient way of doing it. The problem is that this is done only at render time. So everything else in the world is going to still think that the object is zoomed in or out, which means that like interactable areas are not going to match the size of the visual of your object, which probably is not what you want. It would work for just a label, for example, but it's not going to work for a button because the, the, the interactable area is not going to be calculated properly. So in the end, I went back to my original idea of parenting my UI element 
to the object I want to follow. For the scaling, I attached a script and I created an event inside my camera that will fire every time the zoom of the camera changes and all my unscalable UI element can connect to this event and update their scale by the inverse of the camera zoom so that um, it's always the same size on the screen. Now that works pretty well and the advantage of this versus the canvas layer solution is that instead of having to do it every frame in the process, I only do it when you change the zoom of the camera, which in theory shouldn't be happening every frame. So I think it's a good compromise, but I still feel it's a little bit annoying to have to attach a script to all the UI elements that I don't want to scale. Of course, if I wanted to also cancel the rotation, then I would do have to do something similar where I listen to changes in the rotation of the parent and then uh, update the rotation by the inverse of the other rotation, which, you know, can become quite expensive if you keep adding stuff like that. But in my case, I just needed the zoom, so that works pretty well for me. So as you can see, there's always different solutions and the idea is which one is going to fit the best for your problem and maybe avoid some of the pitfalls of all of those solutions. That's pretty much what I wanted to show you this week. I wanted to show you a little bit the research I did on this subject and the pros and cons of each of the solutions I've tried. And I hope you found it interesting. And if you have an idea of a better solution I could implement, make sure to leave a comment in the section below the video and well, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.